Chest Diagnostic. Hello everybody and welcome to Chest Diagnostic. This is Andrew and we're going to start again on the Endgame series. Now before I get into the positions that we've been studying for Grandmaster Ram, uh, I'm going to be covering some supplemental positions just because I've been studying um, through Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual and Ruben Fine's Basic Chess Endings. Now there's a lot of mistakes in this old book uh, basic chess endings, but of course it's very comprehensive in terms of positions. So of course the Grandmaster Ram positions are just a collection of positions. It's not really a study material, so I've been diving into um, more explanatory texts. Now this is uh, the Lucina position. So we can see here that we're going to cover it first from white to move and black to move, but first we're going to start with white to move. And we can see here that actually we need to go back. The initial position is here. Now, of course, black is down a pawn, and white is threatening to queen his pawn. It's almost to the eighth rank. The key strategic issue for white is that the black king is cutting off what's called his short side. Now, when you look at a pawn in the Lucina position, you're going to look in the center or the bishop files. Now, if the pawn is here, then the short side would be over here. If the pawn is here, for example, then, which it is, then the short side is here. So the correct positioning for black is to have his king on the short side and his rook on the long side. If it's white to move in this position, it's actually a loss for black, though, because white has some defensive resources. Uh, and it's not just building a bridge is what they call it in a lot of the older books, there are multiple um, defensive resources to queen that pawn and force black to trade this rook. But of course, we're going to look at the most famous one. Uh, so white will start with rook to g1. Now the actual strongest defense is king to h7. And now we get rook to g4. So it seems kind of a mysterious move at first, but once you understand what you're doing, it's actually quite simple. So rook to g4 is what's called building a bridge, or basically just interposing with your rook so you can queen your pawn, is what I like to call it. Uh, let's keep things simple here. So cutting off the white king, and now he has to come out with f7, which is the correct timing. Um, if instead of playing rook to g4, uh, instead, let's go back here. If white just played after, well, here we'll go back. So rook to g1 check, king to h7. If white just tried to bring his king out with king to f7, then we get a barrage of checks, and he can't really step away from his pawn to try to attack the black rook because the rook comes back, and now there's no way to defend. White's rook is not behind his pawn, and the king on the short side is cutting off any defensive squares. So he has to move back, and then we just get a barrage of checks. So that doesn't work. Now this is where rook to g4 is strong, because after rook to d2, king to f7, and now he can actually bring his king up. After these moves, he interposes with rook to e4, and there's no way to stop this pawn from queening. That's uh, saying a mate in 7 from this position, if you want to calculate it. So that's the first idea. Uh, actually, another idea is to simply play rook to e1 or rook to d1. Um, those are actually other winning ideas. And uh, basically, the idea is just to protect your pawn and then the sideways checks um, of black. For example, if we play here, then Black could play rook to g7, and now we can actually just play queen to d7. And if we get checks like this, he can actually just bring out his king. And then he has to uh, play rook to a8, queens, trades. And we get a simple king and rook versus a king. All right, we're going to switch to black to move here. 
Now with black to move, it actually is a draw. And the reason for that is because this E pawn is not protected by the rook or the king if either steps away. Now the rook is not protecting that pawn, so the king is left um, trying to defend that pawn, and the rook can employ what's called sideways checks. So if black can achieve checks from on this uh, on this file, then the short side king, uh, now this is where it comes into play, cuts off the white king from these squares. And so what happens is he starts checking and he just keeps checking because if the white king steps away, then he wins this pawn. So he has to play king to c or yeah king to c7 check and now he'll just keep checking him and it's a perpetual and draw so these are very important lines to know in the lucina position but more than memorizing lines you want to understand the theme so i'll just make a quick summary uh, from this initial position you want to remember that if you're defending a lucina position you want to first figure out whether the pawn where if it's in the center or the bishop files, then you want to figure out which side to place your king and your rook on. Very important ideas. So this is the long side and this is the short side. You want to have your king on the short side and your rook on the long side on the furthest file so that you can employ what's called sideways checks to get a perpetual. And that's how you'll get a draw. Now if you're white, you can either employ the bridge method of bringing your rook to the fourth rank and then interposing uh, or you can just simply protect your pawn after you chase the king away and then once black tries to employ sideways checks you just move forward and attack the rook and then queen your pawn all right so i hope that was helpful in covering the lucina position um, i've really been going deep in endings and i'm just trying to get a very firm grasp uh, on any concepts or positions before I make a video because I don't want these to have any errors. So if you analyze this position and uh, found any alternative lines, please include them in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future. Bye bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.